So anyone just starting the video, we're going to walk through how to make this grass model, and then we're going to make a dummy little texture sheet so people can understand how to make a baked texture sheet so it's op optimized so you're not making four blade, uh, 4K grass. It will make your art director want to shoot you. Um, up Unreal, taking you to my little planet, show you what we're doing, and then we'll uh, go off on a little adventure. Hopefully it doesn't, uh, hopefully the streaming and Unreal don't, uh... okay. So this is the grass in Unreal that we're going to make. So you can see the, the detail of the, the normals and just how it's being rendered. It's kind of just like a, this is kind of like a little fun space environment I was doing with some friends, but this is the grass. Um, and I really think that uh, all everything that we're doing can be used in Skyrim. It's just a matter of figuring out how to uh, use it with whatever tools that you guys are using. So this is the. Okay, I think I think Max is open. So okay. So normally what I do is I really like um, like if you guys are using Blender, I'm like I, I'm old, so I like using 3ds Max. I I learned it, and once I learned it once, I was like, okay, this is kind of what I'm going to be using. Um, I like blocking things out with a spline. So if I was going to make um, a grass blade, I would do something like this. Oh, no, no. This is going to be funny. I've done this so many times, but like streaming it, it's going to be like your brain goes right out the window. <laughs> Something super simple. You can do this with uh, this kind of um, technique with the splines you can do with anything. I really found it really useful for getting specific uh, specific points on things, and you can get really detailed uh, meshes really quickly. Um, so let's just add a surface to this. Hopefully, Max doesn't crash. If it does, I have backup, so it's no big deal. Sometimes it likes to not cooperate. Hold on, what's it doing? <laughs> See, okay. Let me just do this again. I have to like concentrate and not try to like show you guys at the same time. <laughs> okay. Let's let's just let's just do this again. Guys, I'm nervous, okay? <laughs> Take your time. So when I'm using, I don't know if you got, if anyone uses Max, but whenever I do this spline technique, you just have to make sure that you're making quads. And then you can do um, something like this, where you can smooth out your corners. And now you have kind of more control over what you're making. So you can just make a nice little stylized grass blade. So let's say we wanted to do something like that. And then we probably want to have a, an indent down the middle. So let's just do that. And then we take, say, this guy and this guy and this guy, bring them down just a bit. Okay, 
So once you have your basic shape, I'm sure you can do this in Blender. Uh, um, to add a surface modifier. And now you have sort of, where's the flip? OK, so now you have kind of like a plane of your grass. Then I would add a uh, shell modifier to add some depth to your shell. So now I have a, like a thick edge. And I want to make sure that I have um, Let's see. So you can use your modifiers to kind of get a thick edge. And then I want to get, there's the segments part. OK, yeah. So now that I have that, I can kind of collapse all this. And then I would probably add a turbo smooth to this. I don't like how my Max does that. I can't seal. I also do, sometimes I do things, and they're really like, oh, see, I skipped a step. <laughs> OK. I want to add these steps here, and then I want to do this. Yeah, so now I have this, and then from here, I can add my surface modifier. Or my shell modifier, I mean, sorry. OK, yeah, with my, seg with my segments there, OK. So once, so once I have this, collapse it. And this is where I could bring this into uh, ZBrush to get my details. So I'm going to just export this. So that should be here. OK, so let's open up. For now, we, we're good with. So you can, you can use this spline technique. I mean, you, if you guys want to uh, ping me or message me or like to show you anyone who wants to do something like this later, it's been a very, very useful tool for me to, to make flowers or uh, outlines for leaves. Like You can do it in other programs. I just find being able to draw out a shape and like turn it into a 3D object is like really quickly. Like When I'm not streaming, I'm not nervous. I can do these things like really quickly. Um, OK, so after we have our little blade, we can bring this into ZBrush. Screen. Okay. And then we can start adding our little Actually, do I have it? How come it's doing this? It? Okay, wait. Something. Sometimes ZBrush and I don't get along. Actually, most of the time, me and ZBrush don't get along. Hmm. Okay. Second. Okay. So let's bring in our grass model. So now we're gonna just gonna add, let's see what the wireframe is like. Okay, yeah, so we're just gonna I just wanna get some little details mm -hmm. on the on the blade here. So I think I'm just gonna do something like like something really simple. These are going to be like very small blades of grass. So it doesn't really matter really what's going on. And I think the biggest problem or like thing I see with newer artists is they think that 
like the this like one grass model that they make in the beginning of their adventure in 3D World is going to be the only thing they ever make, and you'll they'll spend like five hours doing something, and it's like, bro, like no one's going to see that. But it's good to take pride in your work, but sometimes it's a matter of just getting something done. Like this doesn't even really matter. So let's just see what this does. <clears throat> My computer might not enjoy this and streaming at the same time. <laughs> yeah, OK, wait. Just uh... so basically, I think my computer is having a heart attack. So let's just <laughs> let's just say we got from there to this is where you guys can see how I would get to somewhere like this. And then from here, I would go back to um, whatever 3D um, program that you're comfortable with and start blocking out. I'll just do it with Max again. Um, after you've kind of sculpted out a grass blade, you would make your uh, grass little bush. And like that, that part is the part that you want to spend the most time um, working on because you want to make sure that your model that you're baking onto a plane is as detailed and beautiful as possible. Because once you bake it, you can't, uh, and you start texturing it, you can't really go back. So it's, it's, a, it's an important um, milestone step to sort of accept your high poly model as is. And then you kind of just have to deal with it after that. Um, and if you're getting it from somebody else, like let's say, you got uh, your model from someone else, and they en end up changing their mind. It's kind of like if you're if you're already halfway through texting it, uh, texturing it, then it's kind of too bad at that point. So I have my I have my ZBrushed uh, beautiful grass blade, and I would just start. Oh, oh no! What did I do? I thought I was in Unreal still, and I just. So I can just start bringing these guys around. You want to you want to like make a make a model that you're happy with. Spend some time. Usually, I would spend probably an hour just doing this with some music on. <laughs> so this is kind of funny. Um, you want to like make them different sizes. If you were really feeling ambitious, you could probably make two or three different kinds of grass blades. It doesn't have to just be one. You want to make sure that they're all lined up um, at the bottom so they're not, so it doesn't look silly because it's not going to end up going through. It's going to go through the ground, but you want to you want to make sure that it looks like grass. So you have something like this. And then we're just going to start adding um, like a, a bend modifier. I'm, I don't know if, if anyone has. If anyone is super good at Blender and knows what the modifiers and stuff would be to do this stuff, and they want to jump in and say something about that, feel free, because I definitely can't help you with that. <laughs> There's a couple of these, like, displacements or bends or uh, cages and stuff. Whatever. So see how, see how that is just, like, uh, like right away making oh, okay. a big difference? So... I would, I would spend some time, and I would just give myself a good base where every piece is bending in a different direction, but also not intersecting with other objects. Because you, you don't want to end up in a situation where you've spent all this time, and then uh, you look at it, and it's, it's just a bunch of garbage. Because then you've, since you're taking so much time, because you want to be so good at this, <laughs> You want it to be good the first time you do it. You don't want to go back and redo things if you don't have to. So you can kind of, oh boy. So I use that. Look at the different directions. Yeah, so here we got starting to get, like, when it, when it gets closer to the camera, you get that you're going to get this really, you want to get really good normal. So you want to get something like this, where it's bending towards the camera. Because that's going to that's gonna be a really, really nice bake. That's where you're going to get um, 
a good um, ambient occlusion map, but also a good normal map. Um, the biggest, the big thing here is that you're you're looking at like how the the model is balanced. Which I think she shows you in here. Like you you want to make something like this with your your grass model. You want it to be um, like intersecting. A big thing. One of the big things my teachers told me was to look in thirds. So you want to have like um, a big like I think there's wait, yeah see see this one you've got something a big chunk up here and then there's like there's tier one tier two and then tier three down here these kind of like little brush things if you can incorporate three layers of uh, reality or detail into your objects they really sell a lot better like you've got up here here and down here kind of like you know your your sidewalk medium grass and then tall grass it's always a good um, point of reference for making things look um, like more detailed and just better. So in the case, in the uh, interest of moving right along, <laughs> I'm going to just bring in my grass model. Well, like what you could do from here, make your grass model, and then you would want to bring that back into ZBrush and just give it a little bit of personality. So I'm going to just import one that I've already done because I want to like I don't want to if anyone wants to like go over the steps again like I'm more than happy to go through it but I really want to sh show you the whole process um, so what you would do from here is you would want to set up your texture uh, your um, foliage sheet and you want to make sure that when you're planning your level or whatever it is that you you're uh, you know what you're making before you make it. So if you're gonna if you're gonna work on if you're a foliage guy, you you need to make sure that you know how many different kinds of foliage you're making, like what kinds of leaves, what kinds of trees, um, so that you can optimize everything to be on one texture sheet. If you can pull off a whole environment on one texture sheet, it looks it looks really great, and it it shows that you can be organized, especially with the UV mapping after. It's uh, really important. It's, it's, it's really good if you can get everything on one texture sheet. It helps with draw calls. It just helps with overall uh, like professional level of your scene. Um, so you, you would get something like this. Like let's say we made four different grass models, and they were all um, different and beautiful and perfect. You want to, OK. So this is going to be now our sheet that we're going to bake our texture textures onto. So the big thing to, to take into consideration here is uh, texture space. So um, before, when uh, we were talking about making the tile sets, the same thing here. You want to maximize the, the texture uh, space of your uh, sheet. Um, so you, like I could probably make these a little bit bigger. Oh, Max is going to start. OK. I don't know if I like if I start to. It's making an autosave file because these are huge. So that's going to be annoying. Can you guys still hear me when this is happening? Yeah, you're good. <laughs> okay. Okay. So what we could do here is we could like turn this around. Actually, let's just make diff do different rotations to kind of give. Let's do like <laughs> okay this and then something like that. So now we have four different grass models just from rotating it. Um, and you know, if we were really good little texture artists, we would spend a lot more time making this optimized and you could probably fit like you could probably fit like 20 you know on these but we're gonna we're gonna be really bad texture artists and we're gonna bake this onto a 4k map and call it a day so if i look here i can kind of see i want uh i want to get these to be just kind of intersecting through because i want to get all like the ambient occlusion all the way through I want to get a really, really nice ambient occlusion map in Substance Painter. So what we're going to do is we're going to call these, 
Wait, so if you, I don't know if anyone is familiar with baking, but this is kind of, this is going to be an interesting kind of hilarious learn how to bake something. And this was like, you know, three projects of a course that I took. So what we're going to do is we're going to name all of our low poly assets. We're going to call this grass underscore low. Hi, sorry, grass underscore high. Rename. They're all going to share the same name over here in the outliner. Then over here, we're going to call this grass underscore low. So this is, this is going to be how Substance Painter knows what to put where. These guys all need to be the same. Ob um, actually, no, they don't need to be the same object. But what we want to do is on our high here, we're going to set up some material IDs so that we can, um, I'm just going to put this on the other screen for a second. I'm going to hide this for a second, and then let's just make these. What I'm going to do is uh, isolate some of these blades so that when I'm texturing, I can pull those out without having, have, without having to do any uh, manual masking. I like to do as much automatic texturing as possible. I don't like to, uh, I don't like to do much painting unless it's a really... Um, specific asset or anything like that. So I'm just going to pick out some of these blades. Oh, you don't want to behave? That's going on. Sometimes they don't want to behave themselves. So anytime you're assigning um, materials for IDing, you just want to have your little So let's probably make a few of these. Let's make three. Oh. OK, yeah. So let's make you something hilarious, pink. And then to the selections, now these guys should be pink. OK. Let's do. Sorry, my computer is trying its hardest. <laughs> OK, and then this one, we will do the same thing. Then we'll do one more. This is so funny. I know I'm going to watch this later and be like, what are you doing? <laughs> OK. You're doing great. Don't worry about it. What Pat said. OK, so now I have my little, see, so you see how like this yellow blade is like going behind and stuff. Like if I didn't put these material IDs, I would be very, very screwed in terms of uh, trying to texture those properly. Um, I've definitely done something to my viewport. So I'm just going to um, save this and reopen it because I'm scared that I'm going to screw something up. So I'm just going to save it, open it back up, and then bake it, and then we'll go from there. Mm -hmm. 
can show you. Okay. Sorry, I have two. I have two versions of Max installed on my computer, and it's just opening with the wrong one. So I'm going to tell it to stop doing that, and then second. Me and Max have a very complicated relationship. Sometimes we get along and sometimes we don't. <laughs> So after okay, so after we do our um, baking on the planes, what we want to do is make a uh, a model to put the grass onto. So this is an example of what uh, the grass model actually looks like. So they're color coded because the first time I did this, I did it wrong, and I wanted I thought I was going to be super impressive and like make uh, three grass models and put each one on its individual thing so i have three different grass models and that's like the wrong way to do it you want to have mm -hmm. like one text one uh instead of three materials on one grass you want to have one texture sheet uv to different parts so like it's, i could just what i'll do in a minute is just reassign the materials so they're all one and then uv uv them uh accordingly um, Okay, so let's just open this back up. Hopefully it's still alive. Okay, good. Okay, so I've, it looks like I've done something to it where I can't zoom out, which is really, really funny. And I think it's because, there we go. Okay, I solved my own problem, guys. Are you proud of me? I'm proud of me. I'm proud of you. <laughs> okay, so that, so now that we, usually I use this um, this grid as sort of a basis for the, uh, the texture sheet. So what I'm going to do is just... Oh, actually, I actually already have this. I already have it. I already have it. Guys, I'm losing my mind. I lost it a long time ago, but this is... I open the outliner, and it should be right here. Yes. Okay. Grass low. We've already assigned our names. We've made sure that the plane is through here. And then we have the biggest step we have to do is make sure that they share the same pivot. So we want to put the pivot to zero, but also not just the directions, but also the rotation needs to also be the same. Cancel all that out. Not cancel all that out, but collapse everything. And then uh, I don't know if there's a um, reset X forms in Blender, but that's also what we need to do. We need to reset the X forms. It's just, I think it's like clear history in um, Maya. And then there must be something like that in Blender where it's like, 
there's no history on the object. It's just this is how it is, and like it just resets everything, and then I just collapse, collapse this. So we have just our little beautiful grass and our plane with our materials. And then as soon as it figures out its life, I'll export them and then we'll bake. OK. So grass high, we're going to select those, export. We're going to call it the same, so grass underscore high. And then this one we're going to call, this might take a second because they're really high density. This is where if you were going to optimize your, um, your ZBrush, you have to be careful with your ZBrush model because I've now made four of these. And my computer is, like, so there's a good chance that Substance Painter will be like, what have you done to me? Why are you doing this to me? And it'd be like, just not do it. But we're going to see what happens. Sometimes I've run into situations where I've made the super high poly model and bring it into Substance Painter, and Substance Painter's like, are you joking? What are you doing? OK, so then I want to call this one grass underscore low, because that's the, the plane. OK, so that should be good. I'm going to open up Substance Painter. And I don't, um, I don't have to UV the. Uh, the plane because the plane automatically is UV'd. So if you were doing if you were doing a um, a low poly model, the the step now would be to um, make sure that your low poly model is UV'd as best it possibly can be with um, like texel density in the right places. You want the um, like the bigger parts of your your mesh to have higher textile density and the, the things you don't see to like doesn't really matter. So we're gonna go to our um, we're gonna pick our plane that we're gonna bake onto, which is the grass low. Um, I'm gonna do 4K because oh let's just let's not try to let's 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 just okay. We'll do 2K. And then uh, Substance Painter has an automatic uh, auto unwrap feature which is experimental but actually quite useful sometimes if you're just trying to get something quick. So I would um, explore this mm -hmm. if you guys hate unwrapping, because sometimes it's really uh, useful. So I have my plane. I'm going to see this is a whole other thing that takes um, a lot to get used to. But these are my channels. I'm going to add the ambient occlusion, and I'm going to add opacity. Um, I'm going to click on Bake Maps. 2K. High definition maps are the grass high. Um, the max, so this is, um, if you imagine how the, the, the program is going to look at the model and then do kind of a buffer zone between um, the low poly and the high poly. Since this is such a huge difference, I want this to be maxed out. Um, Anti-aliasing, I always kind of put on, I'd rather bake it once really well and have a really good quality bake, then it, like do it for five minutes and um, have it not work out so well. So I'm really hoping that this just works. Uh, um, and then I have to turn off. I don't want diffusion, and I don't want dilation. So first, we're going to do a test bake. So we're going to turn all this off. Oh, I always bake the normals first, just to make sure that it's going to work. So if this is good, so yeah, I'm going to bake this. And I should see my four grass models pop up here. And my, and my audio might uh, die because it's having, this is the hardest part. There we go. Guys, it feels really great that that showed up. <laughs> OK. OK, so now that we have this, um, we can see we're getting closer to that, uh, 
that model that we saw in the, the tank head example, like it's obviously you could spend a lot more time doing this sort of thing. And if you hold down shift and tab on Substance Painter, you can rotate the, uh, the lights to see where you are. Um, to get rid of the, uh, the opacity level there, you want to go to textures. You want to find your normal map, and you want to export resource to your desktop. Normal map is going to pop up on my other screen. OK, so now I have this. I'm going to go to Photoshop. I just want to make you think that Substance Painter would do this for you, but I don't. It, maybe it does, but I feel like this is how I learned how to do it. Um, I'm going to open. It's a good thing I don't have any proprietary things on my Photoshop there. <laughs> OK, and then we're going to just make this black because we don't want black. We want to mask out the black. OK, and then here, we can just go right click Blending Options, uh, Overlay, Color Overlay, make it white. There we go. We're going to save as. And you can just do a JPEG. It doesn't really matter. Call it Grass Opacity. I feel like I'm on an exam. <laughs> OK, and then we're going to do this. And then we should have grass opacity. OK, and then we're going to go back here. We're going to change this to We have to change the render, the renderer in um, Where is it? I think it's this one. And then we want to go to our layers. We want to add, OK. And we have to import, import resources. We want to add the opacity mask that we just made. And alpha, it needs to be alpha. That's something that I struggled with for a while trying to figure out, and it should pop up here. We're going to turn all these off and just have opacity and then put this here, and there we go. So now we just have our grass textures. I think it's it looks like it's not exactly black and white, which is kind of irritating. Um, hopefully later on that doesn't uh, make a difference, but I feel like it probably will. Um, so now that we've baked these guys, we can go into, OK, let's say we wanted to start texturing these guys. So, Oh, I should bake out the other. I need to bake out the other maps. So this, is, this might take a second um, to do. So I need to bake out my other uh, textures here. So we're going to save this, just in case. My computer dies. Grass demo. We're going to turn off everything else that we don't need. This is kind of where like we're going on the highway and the computer. It's like usually I would turn my Wi-Fi off and I would like um, like turn everything off that I don't need on. Do this. Fusion's off. This, 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 this. OK. So what's nice about Substance Painter is that it'll, it'll show that its progress through its uh, uh, calculations. So this is the, it's doing the ID right now. So it's looking, it's masking out those pieces. Um, this is going to be, this one probably will take the longest. It's the ambient occlusion. So this is, this is where you want to get, uh, like, I was super happy with um, when I made these sumac trees. Um, I was really, really happy with the ambient occlusion map that I got from them. You can really get some really nice 
as opposed to just like dragging like a gradient across it in the middle, you want to get this really beautiful shadowing happening because you can uh, not only use that in the engine but also texture with it too. So I'm getting I'm getting those those deeps behind and the and the lights up here. While this is doing that, I'm going to make a mask that I'm going to need in Substance Designer. I want to be able to do a gradient. Um, so I'm going to do this, and I'm just going to safe transform it once. I'm just going to export that because I want to be able to to use this as a as a texturing gradient. If I just had one, I could do uh, bottom to top, but I'm just going to save this out so I can use it. Almost done. Okay. I'm trying to think what else I can show you guys. This technique, yeah, like it, the, the more stuff you can cram onto a, a texture sheet, the better. Like I literally did the same thing here where I masked out, I used those color IDs for like texturing the branches, texturing the leaves. And I, I wanted to, to get just a certain few of them, different colors to add variation and then add uh, the little flowers at the top. So I think in the, you can see once you've, isolated everything it's a lot easier to go in and just pick stuff out as opposed to like going in and like it feels like you're on like um like paint you know what i mean like trying to do it with like your like really manual and then you just take those pieces and then once you have like this branch you can start to put them together to make a tree um, that 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 process takes a long time. You can use you know speed tree or anything like that. Um, I wanted to see if I could do what what it would be like to do without it. Um, I definitely think it looks like I didn't use speed tree, but I was trying to go for like a stylized whatever. And uh, you can just you have to be really careful too with the normals. That's another thing too. The grass model that you eventually make with this, um, you need to make sure that the normals are all facing up so that it's lit the same way as the terrain, or else you're going to get some really weird, wonky lighting. Um, and then the, like, this is a whole other, maybe later on when one day we can go through the, the Unreal Engine kind of shading, shader thing. But uh, the, you can see like the, the, the ambient occlusion map that I've gotten is, is what's, it's, what's giving it, making it look like they're all individual, they are individually sculpted leaves, but they're on a plane, which gives it that detailed look that I was going for. Um, OK, it's done. So I'm, gonna, I'm just going to bring in that. Uh, the grass, this. OK. Sure. OK. So now I have, I can look at. So normally what I do when I get to this step is I go to the, oh. <laughs> OK, I scroll through and I see what everything looks like before I move ahead. So I want to look at my normal map to see if I see anything that's super wrong with it. I think it's OK. Uh, the ID map, so I know the IDs are working. Ambient occlusion map looks good. Um, curvature, so it's baked. The, the curvature of the um, the grass onto here. And this is like going to be really, really good for me to use as a mask. So if you imagine um, you could use this for, like let's say you wanted to use this as a mask. You'd say black would be like blue and um, white would be red. Then you could like do a whole bunch of stuff automatically. I'll do it in a second. Um, curvature and then thickness. Like, I don't think it was thick enough to really do anything. So it looks like my best texture option is going to be the curvature map and the ambient occlusion map. Um, and then the one that I just made as well. So I'll go to my layers. And I think for my, uh, my little world, I wanted them to be red. So 
let's just go back to the material for a second. OK, so what I normally do is I make a folder, and I'll call this base, uh, base layer or base color or something like that. I'm going to put this fill layer above everything. And I'm also going to add uh, the AO layer. And I want to find textures, ambient occlusion. I want to put this in here. To make sure that that's in, to make sure that that's in there. Um, this I put above above everything so that I know that the opacity and the A are are baked into it, and like that's the first thing that's happening. Usually, I have like a an adjustment layer above everything. And here, I'm going to add my fill layer. So let's say we're going to make some nice alien grass. I'm going to make sure that I just want um, the color for now. Maybe the maybe the roughness. So. Each fill layer that I'm putting on is going to affect whatever channels are uh, are here. So right now, I just want to do the color. I'm going to give myself, usually I do five colors. Like I'll have, um, like a, if you're imagining painting a model, like a like 3D printed model, you would want to have your low lights, your mid lights, and your highlights. So I would go, the, let's say, if, like like a burgundy would probably be the darkest, maybe something like this. Then I would duplicate it, move it up a little bit, maybe change it just a little bit. Let's do three colors just for sake of time. OK, so now what I can do is add a bitmap mask. And let's see what the let's just start playing around. So I know that the ambient occlusion map and I know that the curvature map are both good. So let's put the ambient occlusion map in here. And let's uh, add a levels. And we can start playing around a little bit with the mask. You don't want to base too much though on your ambient occlusion mask because um, that's going to give you some weird things happening in the engine. But uh, if you just do it a little bit, it should be OK. This should, this should give me some nice preliminary kind of. Yeah, good enough. OK. And then so this could be our. Uh, base layer, and then I'm going to make another folder. I'm going to do the same thing, but this time I'm going to do something like maybe something a little warmer. It's all about like playing around. Sometimes, usually, like if I don't have a, like a major deadline, sometimes I'll just like make two or three of these and be like, what do I feel like doing today? <laughs> Let's just make it really different and purple. Uh, and add curvature. So we'll add the curvature map instead this time. It looks like it's not very. Yeah, so see how we're getting. It's like, wait, hold on. Invert mask. You can get kind of those little details in there if you play around with it a little bit more. Maybe I like it better the other way. You guys are awfully quiet. Is anyone there? <laughs> We're, We're just watching and judging, you know? <laughs> now nah, you're doing fantastic. Okay. So now I can do something like add, um, oh, you know what would be good here? Let's add, OK, let's put these into our folder. Let's put this into a folder. And then we're going to load in. Did I load in? Yeah, I did. OK, so add bitmap mask. And then we're going to add, what's it called? Uh, grass mask. OK, grass this. Take this out, though. Yeah. Okay. So there we go. Like right. Away, okay. So we're almost. This could be like 
probably done in something else. You know what I mean? Like, this is pretty close. So we can just add a levels, and we can play around with where that gradient is. And I haven't painted, I haven't, like, done anything um, custom yet. This is all just based on the maps that I've baked out. And, like, if we were making a stylized alien world, like, we're, we're basically done. I take the, you want to like always look around too at, uh, like these are, these look kind of like seaweedy, you know what I mean? Like seaweed kind of stylized. I have to work on the, the roughness map. So let's go back to our, uh, a good thing to do in Substance Painter is to always go through your channels. So base color, uh, yes, yeah, so the roughness has no information yet. Um, ambient occlusion. Yeah, so let's just see what happens if we just. A little bit. Okay, yeah. So I feel like these guys would probably be, yeah, like rougher at the top. So what happens if I. Yeah, that's pretty close. So what I would do now, okay, so let's say that we were happy with this because, you know, yeah, we have 10 minutes left. <laughs> Woo, speed run. Okay. Save. Um, what are we going to do now? We're going to export these. Export the textures. I'm going to uh, pack them for Unreal so I can maybe get them into the engine. Guys, I don't think my heart's ever beat it this fast in my whole life. <laughs> OK. Class exports. Doing great, don't worry. OK. Uh, we're going to export these. The, and it automatically packs it for me. So I have this. Uh, it's good to know how your engine packs maps because you can optimize that way as well. So you can have your. Uh, oh, there's even an emissive map. Okay, okay, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Let's uh, let's just add just for fun because we're here. Let's add. Oh, maybe, maybe we shouldn't have fun. No, we can. We can. Let's just make an emissive map. Let's make it like mm, orangey. Sure. Layers. Add bitmap mask. Curvature. Cool. I just want to get the like ooh. That's fun. Just the tips, maybe. OK. So let's just delete the other ones, and we'll, we'll export again. OK, we'll export those. OK, so those are done. We'll save it, and then we'll close. And then we're going to open Max back up. So my grass textures uh, are over here. So now we're going to, I'm just going to make a quick grass model. And then they should be, we should be, we should be done. Oh, I didn't use the masks. Wait. <laughs> OK, wait, hold on. Let me just go back for a second. I'm just going to quickly show you guys how to mask out those leaves. This is why you save as much as possible. OK, let's say you wanted to just, OK, we're going to put all of this stuff into a folder. OK, we're going to close that folder. And then we're going to do another folder where we have something just for, OK, so add mask with color selection. This is going to take the ID maps that we've made before. 
And then it's, we're going to go down here to pick color. And now we have this one here. And then we can, uh, in this folder, we can start fooling around with what just these ones look like, which is like probably the most powerful thing that you can do that I've come across in like this for a while is like instead of having to go in it and mask stuff, it's masked already. It's not perfect. Sometimes you get like this stuff happening, but um, you can fool around with it a little bit and you can sort of figure out what, what to do with that. So you can just add a little bit of variation uh, between these things. So I can just pick a different color now, duplicate it, pick a different color, and then change this. Wait, why is it doing that? Okay. So you can see like, okay, yeah, so let's make this one a little bit more like that. And then we're gonna make another one. Another These are the most hilarious looking grass I've ever seen in my life. That's okay. We're on an alien planet and there's no rules, guys. We can do whatever we want. So there's the there's the mask. There's the mask with the uh, the difference there, which gives it like if you obviously spend some time instead of trying to rush through it, you can really get some really beautiful you could even mask each one out if you were feeling like, you know, like you wanted to do that. I don't. <laughs> Um, so let's save that, and then uh, we'll go back here. So now what we're going to do is bring in a plane. And then bring in our... Uh, say the um, diffuse. OK, so now we can see where our grasses are. And we can just detach. OK, so let's put the pivots in the middle of each one. There is a way to just do them all at the same time, but I don't remember. OK, so now we can just make a little a quick model. We want to probably add a little 
spend to, uh, hmm, it depends. Sometimes, depending on how expensive you want the geometry to be, like it can get kind of uh, expensive to add topology. So let's just see what happens if we use this. So we'll do grass demo. Save. We'll open up Unreal. <clears throat> Almost there, almost there. Probably like five minutes if people are uh, getting antsy. Just opening up the Unreal project. Uh. <laughs> yeah, right? OK, import, and then, oh, wait, 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 wait. wait. OK, well, hmm. I should have made them, I should have made it one object. Does it matter? Yes, it matters. This is where, OK, so this is the moment. Here's a good moment where it's like, should I go back and fix my mistake or make everyone on my team angry? You go back and you fix your mistake. That's the good thing. Good lesson. So. Yes, right, exactly. So I have to go back here and I have to connect these together as one object. That was a mistake that I made. So this should all now be one object instead of four separate objects rendering four separate things, which, is, which would defeat the purpose of doing this whole thing. <laughs> OK, so it should be one thing now. OK, and now I just want to make another folder for my textures. This also could be packed a lot um, more optimized. I could probably spend some time um, packing these so that they're in different channels instead of uh, the way they are. But it's, it's, it's not bad. I just need to go and fix some settings in here. So this mask has the, um, the roughness, the metallic, and the ambient occlusion in one, in, in one map on different, uh, like the RGB channel. So that's why it looks like this, because it's um, rendering through um, the different channels. I'm just going to make a quick material.
grass model. Actually, let's let's have some fun. Let's go in here. We're gonna call this rename grass demo material. Something is going on with the shader though. Oh, <laughs> okay, wait. This one. This is the one we want. Grass demo. We're going to go here. There we go. Wow. Whoop, whoop. Guys, I can't. Bam. I, I can't. That's I can't. Awesome. I honestly can't believe I did that. To my, to be honest with you guys, I can't believe all that just worked. <laughs> <laughs> but it's in there. What you would want to do next is spend time. Um, you would want to spend time making the diffusion map, like the. Uh, you can really go crazy here. So you can see, like, uh, well, we can actually probably go more than that. Minimum, let's say one, and maximum, like, 10. And then let's say, there we go. Woo! That's nuts. That's so cool. <laughs> they're not moving so these guys these ones are moving but that's a whole that's another time that's another hour <laughs> <laughs> next time um that probably was a lot at once uh if anybody has any questions um feel free to add me and uh ping me or whatever um i feel like this is how you guys can really step up what is happening and put it if you have everything on one texture map like this if you had like you know 15 things on here you'll really be able to save your draw calls and like um organize things so that you have just one map and then you can like get creative with how you put like by UVing different parts of your texture map together you can come up with some really cool shapes yeah, that's it. That's it. <laughs> I'm done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Congratulations, man. Yeah, yeah that was fantastic. Nice, I, I think it was well paced. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I was I was worried that I'm like <laughs> it's a lot of information and I'm also very nervous. <laughs> so it's just a matter of like okay. Yeah, so at least it's working and there's grass. So that's what's good. Mm. Yes. Does anybody have uh, any grass questions? <laughs> I think we can all say though, gracias. Wow. No doubt. <laughs> <laughs> I had to do it. I'm sorry. Get out. <laughs>